Hello, BookTube. I've got some mail for you today, some packages, some boxes. Who doesn't like a nice live mail hall opening? Hmm? Several of you pointed out during last night's Steve stream that it was rather daring of me to open uh, mail live on camera. And at first I didn't think anything of it uh, because all of my videos are live in a way. I don't edit. So if it's either acceptable or it's not to go up, but I guess I see the point that some of you were making, which is that if it had gone wrong right then on camera, well, it would have been recorded. Right? I don't know a way to, I guess I could take down a live stream after the effect, but uh, I'm confident that we can get through this. We are on a roll. We're on a streak for opening mail. I'm confident that we can get through this with a little bit of food for thought. <laughs> so let's see what this first one is. I am very much in the mood for uh, October finished copies. Let's see if we can do that. This is for January, so that's we're well off the mark there. This is a novel uh, by Marie, Marie Helene Bertino. I wonder if this is translated. Uh, this is Beautyland. Oh no, no, this is 2024. Could it be that we are... Uh, that 2023 was a, a blessed year for American book designs and that they're going back to being ugly? Oh no. Uh, this is a wise and tender novel about a woman who doesn't feel at home on Earth. And this is the author of the book Parakeet. Uh, at a moment when Voyager 1 is launched into space carrying a famous gold record, a baby of unusual perception is born to a single mother in Philadelphia. Adina Giorno is tiny and jaundiced, but reaches for warmth and light. As a child, she recognizes that she is different. She also possesses knowledge of a faraway planet. The arrival of a fax machine enables her to contact her extraterrestrial relatives, beings who have sent her to report on the oddities of Earthlings. For years, she has moved through the world and makes a life for herself among humans. She dispatches transmissions on the terrors and surprising joys of their existence. But at a precarious moment, a beloved friend urges Adina to share her messages with the world. Is there a chance she is not alone? Not alone, so another alien on Earth. I, okay, kind of a weird premise. I kind of like that. Uh, so this comes out in mid-January, so it's not on my radar at all during this year. Let's let's see. Let's move on. We're doing fine. <laughs> We're doing just fine. Uh, let's see what this next one is. This is a finished copy of something. Oh, okay, great. Uh, this is a finished copy. Comes out in the first week of October. We saw this already. Uh, this is A Cold Highland Wind, A Lady Emily Mystery by Tasha Alexander. This is a rather pretty finished copy. Uh, her intelligent and escapist historical mystery set it takes readers around the world through the Victorian age. Perfect for Victober. Constantinople, Normandy, Venice, Paris, the French Riviera, St. Petersburg, and so on. Uh, and in this book, we are transported to the wild Scottish Highlands. Lady Emily, her husband Colin Hargreaves, and their three sons eagerly embark on a family vacation to Canfine Isle Castle, a Scottish estate of their dear friend Jeremy, the Duke of Bainbridge. But a high-spirited celebration at the beginning of their stay comes to a grisly end when the Duke's gamekeeper is found murdered on the banks of the Loch. Handsome Angus Sinclair had a host of enemies. The fiancé he abandoned in Edinburgh, the young woman who had fallen hopelessly in love with him, and the rough farmer who saw him as a rival for her affections. But what is the meaning of the curious runic stone left on Sinclair's forehead? This was out in early October. That's just a few days away. I have the advanced copy. I haven't got to this, even though I like this series. Uh, so a Victorian murder mystery. Maybe I'll let it go until October uh, and just read tons and tons of Victor Victorian-themed or Victorian-written stuff uh, during the next big booktube event. <laughs> uh, so let's, that's, that's fine. We're two for two. Let's go on to this next one. <laughs> okay. All right, well, you can't do much better than this, now can you? <laughs> this also comes out next week. Uh, this is by Verna Vinge, and this is uh, A Deepness in the Sky in the new Tor Essentials line. These beautiful trade paperbacks. Uh, wow, okay. Well, this is, this is the latest addition to the Tor Essentials line. Uh, and it is, after, let's see, after thousands of years of searching, humans stand on the verge of first contact with an alien race. Two human groups, the Quang Ho and the, the culture of free, innovative traders, and the Emergence, a ruthless society based on technological enslavement of the mind. The group that opens trade with the aliens will recap, will reap unimaginable riches. 
But first, both groups must wait at the alien's very doorstep for their strange star to relight and for the alien planet to reawaken as it does every 250 years. <sighs> okay, well, uh, uh, this is a, a sequel uh, to uh, Fire Upon the Deep, and I don't have a copy of this. I had the, uh, the mass market paperback of A Deepness in the Sky eons ago and don't don't have it anymore so this is this is just lovely very happy to have it wonderful okay uh then we get to uh an oddly wrapped package i think this might be from one of you uh so it we're we're in the territory of discussing rule number one on this channel for those new viewers here uh rule number one on this channel is don't send me a book <laughs> i know it's, it seems like the most natural thing in the world since i am surrounded by books and i i live and breathe them but Definitely don't send me a book unsolicited. If you want to send me a book, check with me ahead of time to make sure that I want it and don't already have it. Which I know spoils the surprise for a lot of you, but otherwise you're wasting your time and mine. You're wasting your money to mail something to me that I will not want. So don't send me a book without clearing it with me first is rule number one on this channel. Rule number two is send me your tech. If you have unloved or unused tech that still works, wipe it. Factory reset it, package it up, and send it to me. And somewhere hovering over there is rule number something or other, which is that Steve is always right. Uh, but let's see what we have here. Oh, it's romance novels. All right, I think this person did clear this with me. Uh, this is J. The first one is J. It's a package of romance novels. The first one is J. Lee, One Rogue at a Time. Don't think I have this. Uh, I recognize this author, though. She did uh, 50 Ways to Ruin a Rake or a Rogue or something like that. This is 2015. I may have a copy of this sitting in the in the gigantic romance collection. Oh, this next one's older, though. I know I don't have this. Edith Leighton, uh, Love in Disguise. Oh, my. Look at that older period romance. How fantastic. When does this take place? Is this actually a Regency? Uh, are you going to give me a time? No. No. Uh, oh, fantastic. I don't know that they don't make covers like this anymore. I don't know that I've ever read this. Edith Leighton, I think, wrote some classic old Regency, Signet Regency romances, a type that I love, but I don't recognize this at all. Uh, okay, this next one is uh, An Earl to Enchant by Amelia Gray. I am pretty sure I have this. Uh, this is from what, 2020? 2021. A reprint uh, from 2021. So, I may have this or not. I will double check against all of these, but oh my, I'm going to gobble these down. Absolutely gobble them down. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, this one is is familiar. I don't. Some of these newer ones are familiar to me. This is from uh, what 2016. This is Amy Sandis. This is Luck is No Lady. Uh, is this Regency? Uh, gently bred Emma Chadwick always assumed she'd live and die the daughter of a gentleman. When her father's death reveals to a world of staggering debt and dangerous money lezers, she must risk her good name to put her talent for mathematics to use. Taking a, pro a position as a bookkeeper to at London's most notorious gambling hell. <laughs> so you must be a, a Regency, but a modern one, 1817. Okay, all right. A whole package of romances. Boy, the person who sent this, thank you so much. Um, okay, then we have Emily Greenwood. I don't know this author really well. I don't think I do. This is How to Handle a Scandal by Emily Greenwood. This will be another modern Regency, but obviously very different from, from what would ever happen in a Regency Roman. This is also 2016. No date given here, uh, but uh, some obvious attractions. <laughs> so, so what else have we got here? Oh, and then we have uh, genuine old Signet Regency romances of the type that I absolutely love. This is Margarita by Joan Wolfe. I have a copy of this, but it's not in this kind of condition. This is in perfect condition. And this is Joan Wolfe writes, uh, her Signet Regency romances are quite different from a lot of the others that you used to read in those lines. They look all interchangeable, but she, her, her old Signet Regency romances tend to have more of a punch to them. Uh, more real world grimness creeps its way in to hers. Makes, ends up making them really interesting. Uh, and then the last of them here is... <laughs> okay, I don't think I have this one. This is Elizabeth Fairchild. Captain Cupid calls the shots. Uh, they're, they're outside somewhere. It looks like a country cottage of some kind. You'd think that they would be doing archery with a title like that. 
but fantastic. Okay, fantastic. All right, so a big batch of romances. Great. Uh, and then we have a box to round out another successful mail haul. How wonderful. <laughs> to think that mail hauls might be back on this channel, that is wonderful. Uh, let's see. Let's see what's in this next one. Uh, it's packed nice and heavy. We've got uh, lots and lots of paperwork. It's kind of gross. Okay, let's get the paperwork out of there. Cardboard out of there. What on earth? Look at all this stuff. Uh, more and more paperwork. What is... Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Finally, I have the book. That was overpacked. A, a manila envelope would have served just fine for this. But when when do you come out? Uh, September 2023. All right. Well, <laughs> this is a publication sheet. This is not designed for the public. This is designed for editors and reviewers. I'm one of both of those. And we don't care about September 23. We care about the date. <laughs> the date. And you know the release date. Whoever put this together, you know the release date. You know it's not just September. You know the release date for the book. But it's not on here. <laughs> anyway, the book is uh, Life and Afterlife in Ancient China by Jessica Rawson. Wonderful. An epic new history of ancient China told through the prism of a dozen extraordinary tombs from one of the most eminent Western scholars of China. How interesting. One, just the other day, one of you was asking me for recommendations about ancient China. And here's a book, a new book on ancient China. Uh, tombs and the treasures within them are almost the only artifacts to survive from ancient China, their scale and sophistication rivaling their equivalents in ancient Egypt. This, in this book, esteemed sinologist and art historian Jessica Rawson explores the relationship between these burials and their social context and the ecological environments. The result is an innovative exploration of the foundations of Chinese society. How fascinating. So you're doing it through the lens of tombs. Analyzing 11 grand tombs and a sacrificial site, each from a specific historical moment and place, the author shows how the, they reveal wider political, dynastic, and cultural developments, culminating in the lavish and amb ambition of the first emperor's monument, guarded by his army of terracotta warriors. The author's readings of these structures and, hu and hugely varied artifacts carries the reader across China's vast and diverse landscapes and examines contemporary, complementary, but sometimes contradictory, early texts. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, fantastic. All right, well, in September, I'm assuming this is out already. I don't really know. I should know because the sheet should tell me. But uh, but here it is. Here's the finished copy. That's terrific. I will uh, put this on the agenda tonight. Uh, just just in case. I will, just in case it's out already, I'll put this on the agenda tonight. Oh, fantastic. All right, so let me show you, let me show you what you're getting here. You get not only uh, black and white spot illustrations that show you some of the things. You also get shaded maps and a couple of insets of... Uh, of color photos of these items and these places. Fantastic. Just fantastic. You get a couple of those. There's, there's two islands of, uh, of color photos. Just amazing. All right. Fantastic. So uh, we're a little Steve Pyramid here. We're going to get these romances out of the way. We have Life and Afterlife in Ancient China. Uh, we have uh, A Deepness in the Sky in a beautiful new trade paperback. We have uh, A Cold Highland Wind, A Murder on the Scottish Highlands. We have Beautyland, new uh, high-profile science fiction for the new year. And then a bunch of romances, One Rogue at a Time, <laughs> Love in Disguise, uh, An Earl to Enchant. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, let's put that down. Move this over here, pick these up again, okay, move this over here. Okay, put Beautyland back here. Okay, then an Earl to Enchant, uh, Love in Disguise, uh, One Rogue at a Time, Luck is No Lady, uh, How to Handle a Scandal, and then two actual Signet Regency romances, the type that I love, uh, Captain Cupid Calls the Shots, and Margarita, which I already know I like. So that's, that's wonderful out of a known quantity like that. So there you go. Uh, yet another mail haul, yet another mail haul successfully done. I'm starting to think there's nothing to this. I'm starting to think there's no need for food for thought. So there you go. That is the mail. I will wrap this up for now, and I will be back. Thank you, BookTube.